SHTF can come in different flavors from personal to the end of the world as we know it. The same as with civil unrest. It might be a full-blown civil war or a fight for ideologies. That's even more concerning regarding the fact that the anti-gun lobby becomes stronger and stronger and can do some real damage to free Americans using the power of the then-still-working state. For you, this means to act fast and to prepare yourself with whatever situation might arise in the not-so-distant future. To make this easier, there are five categories of guns that have to be covered. A handgun. You need a good quality handgun. It serves a triple purpose. First, it's easy to conceal compared to a rifle. That allows you to have it on you wherever you go. Second, it is lighter and smaller than a rifle, allowing you to carry it when you perform certain tasks. This means you're never really unarmed. Third, it's your backup weapon. Whenever your rifle quits on you, for whatever reason, your handgun is better than throwing your rifle at your enemy. To serve all of these purposes well, your handgun should be either a full-size gun or close to it. This gives you adequate firepower as your backup. At the same time, it should not be oversized to be able to conceal it reasonably well. Yeah, a tiny subcompact might be better here, but you would be limited in range and punch of the individual rounds. Also, it should come with some decent capacity and be a semi-automatic. Both of these parts are going hand-in-hand hand as revolvers usually come with a capacity of 6 and sometimes even 8, but not more as long as we forget these smaller calibers like 22 long rifle. As a semi-automatic, you get fast follow-up shots to overwhelm an opponent. Thanks to a high capacity, you're able to apply this kind of firepower repeatedly without reloading. Finally, being a semi-automatic, you can reload it fairly fast. For the caliber, there's a lot to think of. Talking about self-defense, 22 long rifle is out of the question. For the same reason, the 380 ACP is not recommended. What is better than nothing, it is worse than 9mm. There are calibers with quite some punch, but you also have to think about the price of the rounds when you stock up and the ball can wait if you have to carry it around. This leaves 9mm as your best overall choice as it is cheap, small and light enough to be bought and carried at quantity. At the same time, it is strong enough to make an impression. If you are in an area where bears can be encountered more often, you might want to consider 10mm or 357 SIG. However, both bring you the problem of finding ammo after the end of the world. Then it'll be 9mm and 45 ACP that'll be the easiest to be found. In that regard, if you want to go silent, heavier 9mm and 45 ACP standard rounds are subsonic. Together with a suppressor on your gun, they make for some sneaky action. If this is the route you consider, do not forget that 45 ACP is on the heavier and bulkier side. Also costs a little bit more than 9mm to stock up. And just a point to think about. A defensive rifle. A defensive rifle gives you the all-around firepower you need to truly defend yourself either at close ranges or at some distances. There are some fine options out there. You can go for an AR platform, an AK, or something different like the Tevar. There is a lot speaking for the AR. First and foremost, it's a common rifle in America. That makes it easy for you to find mags or spare parts. Also, you can customize it by attaching optics or grips to suit your specific needs. Apart from this, the AR platform itself is very ergonomic, accurate, and reliable. It's so popular for a reason. Of course, if you want to get the AK route, or get another not that common rifle, that's okay, as long as you train yourself well with it. However, it'd be recommendable to also train with an AR just in case that you need to swap one day. Chances are that you find more ARs in the US after the end of the world than any other rifle. For the size, you can go with a full-size version with a 16-inch or even 20-inch barrel or something shorter. Maybe as an SBR with a stock or as a pistol with a stabilizing brace. For the capacity, staying with the AR platform, the normal mags with 30 rounds are decent, but you can go for something bigger. There are even drums available for it. As a standard, you can use something chambered in 556 by 45 NATO. That's plenty suitable for a wide range of applications. If you live in a city and intend to stay there, you can also go for something smaller chambered in 9mm. That's still plenty for short ranges and gives you a more stable platform than a handgun. Going with a ported or shorter barrel and the right ammo, for example, with 147 grain projectiles, you can even go really silent. This ammo stays subsonic, eliminating the supersonic crack, and using a suppressor, you eliminate most of the noises from the shot itself. There are plenty of other options when looking at pistol caliber guns. Using something at 45 ACP, you get even more firepower while staying subsonic. Going for 10mm, you get more punch. The added advantage of a pistol caliber carbine, rifle, or AR is that you can use the same ammo for it and your sidearm. On the other end of the spectrum is open ground. If this is the area you find yourself in, you might want to go for something bigger than a pistol caliber of 5.56. 
That could be the good old 308. This allows you to reach out very far, albeit at the price of more bulk and weight for the ammo, reducing how much you can carry with you. A 22 long rifle platform. Most people envision hunting deer or something in that size when SHTF happens. However, the probability is that you'll be more often going for smaller prey. For that, a 22 long rifle platform is a good choice. The round is small and weak and does not destroy much of the meat. More importantly, it's enough for such targets. So rounds are small and light, you can carry a lot of them. Also, they're cheap, and you can buy thousands without breaking your bank. That allows you to save your defensive ammo for when the need arises and hunt smaller animals with 22 long rifle. If push comes to shove, you can even use it for self-defense. Granted, one round does not do a lot of damage, but if you shoot a few of them at an attacker, you're going to make an impression. A hunting rifle. Hunting rifle is pretty obvious. At the end of civilization, you'll have to take care of your own food. Hunting would be one of the most important free time activities. That being said, your hunting rifle does have to double for some other applications. Planning for your own way through SHTF, you have to think that every tool you have must be able to serve more than one purpose. A good bolt-action hunting rifle makes also a good sniper rifle. If you have a lot of open ground near your home, that is what you should go for. Get a good long-range bolt-action hunting rifle and reach out whenever necessary. If, however, the ground is less open and allows for less range, your hunting rifle might better be a lever-action gun. This way, the assault rifle of the Old West and can be your backup assault rifle if you counter two-legged predators while hunting or your primary rifle quits on you. A shotgun. Shotguns are known man stoppers and are often recommended for use during or after an SHTF event. While this is right and true, there is something to consider. Shotguns are bulky and heavier than a handgun. At the same time, they're limited in their range for pellets as well as for slugs. They have a limited capacity while reloading them takes time. Finally, their ammo is heavy and bulky as well. What does that mean for you? Well, if you want to defend yourself in close quarters, a shotgun is not a bad choice. It's also good for different hunting applications. When it comes to wandering the wasteland, you do not want to take it with you. The limited range makes you easy prey for anyone with a rifle. Heavy rounds make you empty after a few encounters. So keep this in mind when choosing your shotgun. That brings us to the question, why is it even included here? Well, the reason is simple. A shotgun is versatile with great firepower. Hit the enemy and the fight's over. Also, they're simple to use and reliable. What more can you want? Bug in somewhere and a shotgun becomes your best friend. Bug out? You need to find something little with lighter and smaller ammo. As a non-unimportant advantage, the guns itself as pump actions are fairly cheap. Also, with a few tools, you can easily reload the cartridges at home. But again, that does not help much when you have to walk a long distance. There you have it, guys. The most important guns for the end of the world. If you have another gun that should make the list... Sound it off in the comments and let us know why.